Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the West Houston Institute and welcome to the 2023 HCC State of the College. My name is Todd Duplantis. I'm the director of HCC TV. And it's great to see you all this morning. I know everybody's milling around. You can find your seats, we'll get started. Because we have a very full schedule for you this morning, but don't worry, the most important part, breakfast is gonna be out very shortly. And uh, I wanna thank all of you for joining us at the West Houston Institute. If you're not familiar, we call this place the WHI. It's the Houston Community College's Center for Strategic Innovation. It was launched during the spring of 2018. Its mission is to empower our students and communities to succeed in changing global society through the development of essential mindsets and skill sets. The WHI is one of 14 centers of excellence pioneered by HCC, focusing on top-notch faculty and industry breast practices to ensure our students have all the skills necessary to be successful in whichever career pathway they embark upon. Now, the West Houston Institute offers several signature programs to accomplish this, including the Ideas Academy, Innovation Fellows, Teaching Innovation Lab, and our Learning Space Institute. For those of you interested more, we'll be having a guided tour of the West Houston Institute. It'll be offered at the conclusion of this program. We'll talk more about that later. Following our breakfast service, our esteemed chancellor, Dr. Cesar Maldonado, will deliver the State of the College address to fill you in on all the exciting accomplishments HCC has enjoyed since we last met. That'll be followed by a panel discussion on our topic, Embracing Houston's Future. Our panelists this morning include Dr. Esmiel Porsa, CEO of Harris Health System, Dory Smith from Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses, and Almira Roldan from Amazon Web Services Machine Learning University. We'll also hear from business owners who have graduated from the Goldman Sachs program offered by HCC. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce you the chairperson of the Board of Trustees for Houston Community College, Dr. Cynthia Lenton Gary. Thank you, Todd. And I just want to thank every one of you for joining us here today at the State of the College Address. We are eager to share our accomplishments and commitment to visionary workforce development as part of our mission and effort to elevate the lives of the community we serve throughout the region. As board chair, it is my privilege to acknowledge my colleagues who are dedicated members of the Houston Community College Board of Trustees. As I call your name, please stand. Trustee Eva Laredo. <laughs> Trustee Adriana Tamez. Trustee Reagan Flowers. <laughs> Trustee Robert Glaser. <laughs> Trustee Prieta Vandible Stallworth. <laughs> Trustee Dave Wilson. <laughs> Trustee Monica Reichardt, who's our vice chair and Trustee, Trustee Charlene Ward Johnson are not with us today because they're not feeling well, so I ask that you keep them in your prayers. And again, trustees, thank you so much for the work that you do. And on behalf of the Houston Community College System and the people of the community you represent, I am proud to serve as your chair of the Board of Trustees and excited about sharing the HCC story. For more than half a century, HCC has been the source of opportunity for hundreds of thousands of residents all of all ages, backgrounds, and academic aspirations. We are a large and very diverse institution poised to meet the demands of a large and very diverse community. HCC provides educational opportunities in a geographical area that covers more than 600 square miles in Harris and Fort Bend counties. Our service delivery area has a population of more than two and a half million people, 
approximately 922,000 adults over the age of 25 do not hold a college degree. This includes approximately 300,000 who have never graduated from high school. As members of the Houston Community College Board of Trustees, one of our goals is to ensure that our institution continually provides accessible, affordable, and quality educational programs that lead to a greater quality of life. As a board, we are passionate about our service to HCC and the people we serve. In our quest to provide a solid education and work opportunity for all, it is our commitment that no individual will be left behind. This is what motivates us to collaborate with local school districts and establish partnerships with four-year institutions such as Texas A&M University, Texas Southern University, University of Houston, and other institutions. Our partnerships with industries like yours are also vital in creating success for our students. Together, we can make a positive difference in the lives and livelihoods of the people in our community. Today, our focus is on the vision for workforce development. You will hear from our chancellor, Cesar Maldonado, about HCC's many achievements. You will also hear from some of our business partners and HCC alumni who will share their stories. It is my hope that you will leave here with a better understanding of why we are called Houston's Community College. Once again, thank you for being with us today as we celebrate HCC's contributions to our communities. Thank you, Dr. Linton Gary. And with that, please enjoy your breakfast and conversation. Our program will continue shortly. Well, good morning once again. Hope you enjoyed your conversation and your breakfast. We have a few elected officials here with us today. If you are an elected official, please rise. We'd like to uh, thank you for all being here. Thanks to all of our elected officials for joining us this morning. Thank you. We also want to recognize one of our former trustees, Dr. John Hansen, has joined us this morning. Dr. Hansen, thank you for being here. All right. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dr. Cesar Maldonado, Chancellor of Houston Community College. Welcome him to the stage. Thank you and good morning, everyone. You know, it's an honor and a privilege to be here with you today. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Houston Community College, the faculty, the staff, and the students, I welcome you to our 2022-23 annual State of the College event. You know, Dr. Letton Gary, thank you for uh, your opening remarks and expressing your commitment, the board's commitment to student success. You know, our trustees volunteer their time and talents to help guide the student success. I want to thank them for their service personally. You know, you've worked hard to chart a course in embracing Houston's future a strategic plan that allows for correction to disruptions like the pandemic technology. Now think 2007 when the iPhone came out. And this is the first iPhone, it still works except the cell doesn't work, but the, uh, the camera works. The, you know, what did you buy in 2007 that still works today? Well, this is it. And what did we do in preparation for this? What did we do as a result of this? Think of the disruption caused just recently by COVID-19 and the rapid development of the test kits that we all became very dependent on and allowed us to reopen the country. What's artificial intelligence going to bring to us? Perhaps in 2026, when uh, I asked uh, Wally, one of the artificial intelligence apps, to design a logo for Houston Community College that uses black, gold, and white, and an eagle as the mascot. And it came up with a couple of designs from me. It actually gave me more than two. And when I arrived in 2014, 
uh, for about the first three months, my staff was anxious and waiting me to roll out the new logo because that's what all new chancellors do. I did not. I want to suggest something on the way out, though, maybe. Um, so, and the misspelling up here is, is uh, purpose, purposely done to protect copyright. So even uh, AI knows it's got to protect copyrights for us. So this is interesting in where we're going with AI, and we just basically started. Now, when I go back to when I joined Houston Community College in 2014 as your chancellor, the first rule of order was establishing a team to review organizational health and culture. That initial group, which began with 65 members and is now called the Strategic Assembly with over 120 members, provided critical guidance and feedback which led in our organizational transformation. We didn't just move some organizational boxes around. We started out with a true blank sheet of paper and developed what HCC is today. This structural makeover brought the focus of the entire organization to the ultimate student experience. That's all things that we need for exemplary student success. And today, we're united as one college because we recognize that everything is interconnected. What happens in one part of HCC affects other parts of the college no matter which college it is or what part of town. Now, we've been able to make this journey a difficult one only because of the trust and confidence that we've had in each other. The Board of Trustees, the administration, faculty and staff internally, and not the least of which are students, but our communities, our stakeholders, our taxpayers, our employers, all of us trusted in each other. And we've performed, and you see it in the results. You'll hear some more about that today. To begin with, one of the challenges I had when I walked through the door was dealing with a $425 million bond issue. And the trustees will remember some of the anxious moments that we had in dealing through this in our spend down rates and in the quality of the work. This bonding that was entrusted to us, we used to enhance existing facilities and build new ones. We completed these projects, 120, excuse me, $25 million under budget. And if you remember what was going on at that time, the, uh, several school districts were building huge projects and we were able still yet to save $25 million. And with that surplus, we repurposed funds to support other student and community opportunities. And we're still using some of that money today. Effectively, our capacity to teach and learn expanded exponentially after we increased our footprint by over a million square feet in our service area, from east to west. To embrace Houston's future, we will consider the next things. We will consider the ongoing impact of COVID and how it affects our services and the needs of our students. How do they study? Where do they study? What kind of connections do they need? HCC successfully navigated the pandemic. We came out stronger for having done so. We learned that we need to continue adding digital learning labs across the district. Beginning with an innovative digital learning lab at our Acres Homes campus, we're gonna build a model that we're gonna use across the entire system. They will replicate the latest technology for our students to access lifelong learning with the resources that they need to succeed. As a top priority at HCC, we transform the student experience by establishing the Pathways to Success initiative. Now, Pathways began at HCC in about 2017 as the ultimate student experience. That was our North Star, everything focused on the student. It is now a statewide initiative that brings the best opportunity for student success by mapping a personalized pathway to college completion for each and every student. As massive a challenge as that is, we can do it, and we've got technology to help us with that. Now, this includes engaging 
in a college experience that provides them a sense of belonging and guidance from the point they enter the college to the point they exit, whether it's to career or to university. Now, as a result of our pathways, over the last four years, we've reduced the time to graduation for first time in college students by more than a year. That's a 30% reduction in time to complete college. And that has earned HCC a recertification as an Achieve the Dream Leader College, not easy to obtain. But it recognizes our whole college approach to evidence-based reform, which increased completion rates. We proved that up. We also received top honors among Texas colleges for the performance in student success through the Pathways Initiative. To embrace Houston's future, we will be more creative in our approach to student success so that they are well prepared to meet the demands and responsibilities in their future. We will do this by using technology to better connect with our students and to more effectively address their needs, making it easier to access digital resources, register for classes. Everyone knows how difficult it is to register for a class at ACC and practice collaboration, which is a needed skill set in the workplace today. To support this, we will establish strategic partnerships. And these have been integral to HCC since my arrival. Many of you in this room today are active partners, helping create opportunities that not only meet workforce demands, but enhance the quality of life for all of us. Likewise, expanded partnerships with the University of Houston, University of Houston downtown, and they advance our engineering academy. Those partnerships do our academies at Katy, at the Felix Fraga campus, and our Caldwell campus, connecting eastern, central, and the western parts of HCC service area. We're being responsive to the entire district with these partnerships. We also have partnerships with Audi and Subaru to train technicians on the, to service the next generation of automobiles, whether they're internal combustion, electric, or autonomous. Intel, Microsoft, Apple, Adobe, Texas A&M University, Prairie View A&M University, University of Houston, University of Houston downtown, University of Texas, yeah, I had to say University of Texas. Texas Southern and St. Thomas University. These are just a few of the many strategic partnerships for which our students and the region benefit. And of course, Pathways would not be complete without mentioning our K-12 partners. Aleph ISD, Fort Bend ISD, Houston ISD, Katy ISD. Spring Branch ISD, Stafford MSD, and many other charters in other schools who work hand in hand to make sure that that student transition to HCC and to universities in the workplace continues. To embrace Houston's future, we must bring our partnerships to impact the daily lives of our students. How do we do that? Well, we're gonna do that with partnerships like, like the one we are one that's coming soon with T-Mobile that will help HCC provide iPads and 5G access to our new students. Now, this not only bridges the digital divide for education, not only bridges the divide for education, it brings a wealth of access to services and communication that is uncommon for many of our students. It builds on the work of HCC's Quality Enhancement Plan of meeting students where they are and becoming part of their life. That's a strong partnership. Now, our student success is also being recognized at a national level. We recently received uh, a, an award named the Bellwether Award, and it's in recognition of our outstanding and innovative workforce development programs. This recognition is a great honor that illustrates the huge impact our institution makes through high quality 
workforce training that fuels our region's rich and diverse talent pipeline. Now, early in my administration, with a focus on academic rigor as a foundation, we advanced a robust workforce and career training portfolio. There was initial thought that these were two separate things and we're going to compete against each other. By addressing them together, we uh, recognized a regional need and aligned our work with state-approved career development pathways. Importantly, this initiative supported students learning at entry level, reading math and writing, advancing into more rigorous levels while entering career pathways. Our experience has proven that a dual focus on academic rigor and robust career training is what we need today. It is not in conflict. It's what we need to meet workforce demands and university expectations. They serve to complement each other and support each other by creating a stronger foundation for student success. An example of our commitment to workforce and career training is the Chancellor's Business Champions Council. It's a group that includes many of you here today, top business leaders and economic development leaders in the region. The Champions Council provides leadership and insight into our workforce development plans. It helps identify career strategies that improve student success. It's input that helps inform us of how to align our educational pathways to meet the needs of key industries and business sectors. The firsthand knowledge that we glean from our meetings with these leaders helps HCC develop the type of programs that meet job demands today and position our students for entry into rewarding careers. This work is critical in helping HCC fulfill its mission and promise to our students and the business community. I'm pleased to recognize our Champions Council members, including our Chair Stacy Putnam, our Vice Chair Lynn Rumford, and our Secretary Adrian Muller. Would you please stand and be recognized? And I'll ask other members of the Champions Council who are present today to also stand and be recognized. I want to add to that recognition one of our newest training partners, Dwyer Workforce Development and its CEO, Barb Clapp. Dwyer is a nonprofit with a mission to provide comprehensive support to individuals who aspire to careers in the healthcare industry. Together, this fall, we will launch with Dwyer a scholar apprenticeship program to support 500 individuals earning their clinical nursing assistant cert certificate, specializing in either phlebotomy or EKG technology. In addition to the advanced education that those students will get from those clinicals, uh, they will experience this hands-on uh, work environment and earn competitive wages and benefits while they're working as an employee in one of the half dozen skilled nursing facilities that Dwyer recently acquired in our area. This is exactly the type of high-value educational workforce development partnership that Houston Community College is ready to pursue at scale. We can do a lot more of this. We also value our established partnerships with Houston Methodist Hospital, with Memorial Hermann Hospital, and many other hospitals in the world-leading Texas Medical Center. Now, to embrace Houston's future, we will need to strengthen our relationship in ways that benefits both students and the employers. We will do this by building on the lessons learned during Hurricane Harvey and COVID-19, which showed us our ability to quickly pivot and design quick response systems when faced with urgent needs. If we approach workforce development 
with the same sense of urgency that we did in responding to COVID-19 and to Hurricane Harvey, we will have phenomenal success in developing pipelines to students, of students to industries that are in need of new talent, and we will be second to none in the country with that sense of urgency. I want to shift a little bit and talk about a milestone that HCC just received uh, with approval to offer two baccalaureate degrees for the first time in history. And, and many of you know and have videos of me saying, so long as I'm the chancellor, we'll never get into the four-year business because I can hit a rock, I can throw a rock and hit a university. Uh, you've also heard me say things change. And where we are today is this new space that is more than associate's degree, but not being addressed by the traditional four-year degrees that we have in our universities. All valued, but there's this new space that's emerging. So these programs that we were addressing on, are enrolling students now to begin in the fall, this fall of 2023. And I'll start with uh, the addition to our Coleman College of Health Science portfolio, a new bachelor's degree in healthcare management. Now, healthcare professionals, the doctors, the nurses, the technicians, they're certainly the core of the healthcare system. However, they require a robust support system around them from administrative staff, from hospital infrastructure, technology, training and compliance. Coordinating these functions falls on a healthcare system manager. This is to ensure that operations at hospitals operate efficiently, uh, efficiently, effectively, and deliver on that high quality care that each one of us wants when we go to a hospital. This bachelor's degree will bring needed capacity to that function across our region. We're also proud to be at the forefront of an exciting field of artificial intelligence, or AI, with the offering of a bachelor's degree in artificial intelligence and robotics. This emerging discipline is highly regarded across many industries. We'll hear more about that today. Now, as a recognized leader in this space, HCC will offer a bachelor's degree that opens career opportunities in technology, engineering, healthcare, finance, and almost any industry you can think of. So what's next to embrace Houston's future? We will continue to follow our North Star, creating new opportunities, aligning education opportunities with market demands and emerging fields. We need to be nimble and we need to be quick. We will support lifelong learning to meet students where they live and work so they can continue to be part of the economy as they're upskilling and not lose a beat. Now, it's been one year since we've announced, or, or formally announced, our Resiliency Operations Center, the ROC, and the Resiliency Center of Excellence. Through this initiative, we are responding to a multitude of disasters experienced by our region. You, you all know them, I'm not gonna go through them here. But we're now providing upskilling for those who will be on the front lines of the next weather, health, or environmental disaster, whenever it occurs. HCC's in the planning stages of designing credit-based associate's degrees for specialties in safety, healthcare, technology, and emergency management that deal directly with the type of experiences when disruption happens. And other credentials will follow as we respond to the needs of industry and the Houston region. To embrace Houston's future, we will design credentials that integrate the resiliency elements of plan, prepare, respond, recover, and mitigate, and align these with the emerging workforce needs to expand workforce capacity in the region as never before. Because these elements that we typically think of as being necessary for disaster recovery are also part of project management in anything that business does. We need to plan, we need to respond, we need to correct, we need to mitigate. 
something that uh, I was reminded of this morning in the newspaper, if you picked up the Houston Chronicle, there was an article about a trip to Mars uh, and then uh, the, uh, the impending SpaceX launch of their large uh, spacecraft out of uh, South Texas. Space City. Houston has been known as Space City for decades and for good reason. It has played a critical role in space, science, and exploration since the inception of NASA. It was here that the famous Houston We Have a Problem call was made during the Apollo 13 mission. It was here that the first moon landing was planned and executed. NASA's recent announcement of the Artemis II project has rekindled the nation's passion for space science and exploration. Now, HCC is bringing space science education back to Houston in a big way with the Challenger Learning Center at our Southeast College. Named in honor of the ill-fated shuttle mission, the Challenger Learning Center is modeled on disciplines and activities related to space science through its offering of immersive hands-on programs that inspire and prepare students for careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. It makes us a big part of the STEM landscape in Houston and beyond. To embrace Houston's future, HCC will provide students with the skills and knowledge that they need to succeed in the 21st century workforce, creating a pool of talent that will drive innovation and growth for decades to come. This is just the beginning of space science and what it can do for us. Our critical part of supporting existing and new opportunities is developing entrepreneurial capacity through small business, women, and minority-owned businesses. Now, this is exemplified with Goldman Sachs and its innovative 10,000 small business program. This year at HCC, we will celebrate our 1,000th graduate. This, this marks a monumental achievement in our mission to help entrepreneurs create jobs and economic opportunity. You know, with a focus on practical business skills, access to working capital, and a supportive network of advisors and peers, this program has changed the lives of thousands and helped our small business community thrive. Since launching the program in 2011, 10 KSB, has achieved a staggering 99% graduation rate. <laughs> and armed with a growth plan that provides immediate impact on our local economy, these businesses have generated an impressive $1.7 billion of economic impact and created over 16,000 jobs. That deserves another round of applause. We recently spoke with three Goldman Sachs alumni to hear the insights that they gleaned from the program and how they've applied it in their companies. I'm Dr. Roy Rivera, and I am the owner of Complete Range of Motion Rehabilitation. We provide outpatient orthopedics and sports medicine rehabilitation in Houston, Texas. It's been five years since I graduated from the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program. If you would have asked me five years ago where I thought I would be, I would not say here today currently. It was very difficult for me as a business owner, you know, working in my business to actually step away and work on my business. I didn't have the support, I didn't have the resources, I didn't have the staff. The program really catapulted me to that level to where I could do those things. Networking and being able to have, you know, other CEOs I can call on when I have an issue was probably one of the biggest things that I gained from the program. It's really important as a business owner that you're in tune with your finances on a day-to-day -day basis. It is true that they say it takes money to make money. Invest in yourself, invest in your business. So don't be afraid to know your numbers and have a plan because you actually have to spend in order to grow. My name is Ashley Small. I'm the founder of Medley Inc. We are a peer and digital marketing agency. 
Since graduating from the program, my business has grown tremendously. I'm so proud because immediately after graduating, I got laser focused on improving my systems, my operations, and getting really detailed as it relates to my finances. The greatest impact the program has had on me has been the opportunity to build community. Since graduating, I've stayed in touch with my cohort members and we have formed peer-to-peer -peer groups to help each other grow and encourage each other. I knew that applying for the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program was the next step for me because I had reached my glass ceiling. Um, I had been in business for five years. I'm a first generation entrepreneur. I was pretty much my own mentor and consultant and coach at the time. And I knew in order to grow, I needed outside support. Um, so I knew the next step would be gaining knowledge, gaining community, and gaining the experience of being in a program like the Goldman Sachs 10 KSB. Good morning, I'm Dave Hess, president of AMS Group, which I founded in 2006. We're an asset manager and general contractor of surplus and retired transformers, substations, and power plants. We resell all usable equipment and recycle the rest. So when I started the program, our revenues were approximately $2 million and we had seven employees. Last year, we were fortunate enough to grow to a little over 7 million in revenues. When I was in the program, I realized that every small business has faced the same challenges, hiring and training key personnel, funding, cash flow needs, business development, marketing, advertising, SEO and culture. So when I had the opportunity to create a detailed one and five year growth plan with roles and responsibilities and how to get there, it really helped to manifest this. So after graduating from the program, I created an informal board of directors with really smart people from our cohorts where we meet monthly, hold each other accountable to our growth goals and share best practices. The biggest takeaway from the program was the thing that we all hear so many times in the program is to work on your business, not in your business. Surrounding yourself with the right kind of people in your staff makes it efficient, makes it okay for you to grow and actually you know, do things that you need to do in your business to help it grow. Work on getting funding when you don't need it. So when the opportunity arises, you can strike. So truly inspiring, you know, all three, Ashley, David, and Roy, are here with us this morning. Would you please stand and be recognized? Thank you for believing in us, and congratulations on your success and your hard work. Now, I want you to please help me welcome Dory Smith to expand uh, on our conversation with but, uh, that we started on the Goldman Sachs program. Dory holds a master's degree in entrepreneurial management from the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. In 2013, she founded Of Mercer, a woman's workwear clothing designer. And now with Goldman Sachs Office of Corporate Engagement, she oversees corporate philanth uh, philanthropic initiatives, including one million black women and a 10,000 small business projects. Uh, please help me welcome Dory to the stage. And thank you for being here. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I haven't seen that video before, so that was inspiring. Thank you for sharing your story um, and, and kind of showing what 10,000 small business is. Thank you for having me here today. I'm Dory Smith, Vice President of Corporate Engagement at Goldman Sachs and Goldman Sachs Foundation. And it is my privilege to run our incredible 10,000 Small Businesses program. I feel truly, truly lucky that we have partnered with HCC for over 10 years. For those who are less familiar with the program, that was actually a really good tee up to what it is, um, and they did a better job than I will, but 10,000 Small Businesses launched in 2009, and the goal was to unlock the growth and job creation potential of small businesses across the United States. We did this by partnering with local community colleges, and Houston Community College was one of our first. We support small businesses through three different strategies, business education, access to capital, and business support services. As you can tell by our name, the original commitment was to serve 10,000 small businesses. We're pretty uh, clear about our, our goals. It was with a $500 million commitment that we were gonna do that. But with the outsized success of the program, 
We've increased our commitment to $750 million in philanthropic capital to serve 20,000 small businesses. And no, we are not rebranding. Thank you. We are well on our way. We have served over 13,600 small businesses across the United States and deployed $1.6 billion in small business loans through our capital partners. I often get asked, why does Goldman Sachs care about small businesses? And this might be a question that Houston Community College gets asked. Why do you care about small businesses? Um, and in a very Goldman fashion, we said, what is the best return on investment for our capital? And it was clear. There was one answer. Small businesses are the backbone of the American economy. Small businesses make up 99% of firms and employ half of all of Americans. When small businesses succeed, so does the rest of the country. And though the word small is in our name, there's absolutely nothing small about the collective impact of our community. Our national alumni collectively represent over $17 billion in revenue and employ over 250,000 people. And through our advocacy work, our collective voice has impact at local, state, and federal governments. <laughs> the teleprompter's missing some of my stuff. Um, when we think about community, Community is the center of everything we do here at 10,000 Small Businesses. And this room is proof of why. You in this room impact Houston, you impact your students, and you impact the livelihood of the small businesses here in Houston. I'm very afraid I'm gonna forget something important to say. I'm, I'm gonna grab my physical copy. It's, So as you heard, we are uh, about to hit 1,000, 1,000, which is an incredible number, uh, graduates of the program here at Houston Community College. Tomorrow we're graduating our 35th cohort of 10 KSB. In this graduating cohort, we have a commercial concrete subcontractor, we have a psychologist, and we have a mobile spa. That just shows you the diversity of the types of businesses that are so essential to our economies. When we think about 1,000, 10,000 small businesses graduates from HCC, that already sounds like a lot, like we're all clapping at 1,000. But that is nothing compared to the collective impact in actuality. These 1,000 businesses employ 17,000 people locally here in Houston. 85% of alumni do business with each other, strengthening the collective economic power of small businesses. And almost 70% of alumni take what they learned in the program and mentor others in the community on exactly those learnings. As you can see, those 1,000 HCC graduates have an outsized impact on this local community. Over the past decade of partnership between Goldman Sachs and HCC, a lot has changed in the world. And small businesses are often on the front lines of innovation and adaption. Small businesses were the first to pivot during the pandemic. They were the first to rethink their supply chains. They were the first ones innovating on hiring practices. Small businesses are often the harbinger of what's to come for corporations and large businesses. And as such, they bear a really heavy load. With continued headwinds, we need to continue to support our local businesses. And we are excited at Goldman Sachs to lean into our partnership with Houston Community College. I wanna thank our incredible 10KSB team here at HCC, our wonderful faculty, staff, business advisors, um, and of course, our executive director, Dr. Kim Burroughs.
Houston Community College, Chancellor Maldonado, on behalf of Goldman Sachs, thank you. We are truly grateful for your partnership and thank you for having me here today. All right, thank you, Dory. Don't go too far. She's gonna be joining us for a uh, panel discussion in a few moments. Um, Let's talk about the other people who'll be joining us in the panel. If you don't notice, I'm stretching for time because they're trying to load these chairs up here. So that's really what this is about. Uh, Myra Rolden, Senior Technician, Technical Program Manager at Amazon Web Services, Machine Learning University. Myra is a leader in digital transformation who pushes for change in higher education and brings a unique mix of technical business and learning experience innovation to the world of adult education and skills development. Also, Dr. Porsa is the president and CEO of Harris Health System, our local community-focused academic and safety net of the healthcare system. Prior to joining Harris Health in 2020, Dr. Porsa served as executive vice president at Parkland Health and Hospital System in Dallas. Looks like they're almost done here. All right. We've also got uh, joining us as well, if we could scroll up a bit. Elizabeth Haynes McGee serves as Intel's Community Affairs Representative for the Greater Houston Region and a Director of the Texas Lyceum. Elizabeth holds an MBA from the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University and has a broad background in global multi-channel marketing, business development, and sales programs. I think we're good. Uh, Elizabeth is also one of our Champions Council members. Leading the discussion will be our Chancellor, Dr. Cesar Maldonado. He's going to join us on the stage and take the discussion away. I'm going to ask our panelists to please give a brief of their organization and how it fits into uh, what our discussions are today. So we'll start with Dory over at the far end who we just heard from. I'll be super brief. I'm Dory Smith. I work at Goldman Sachs and the Goldman Sachs Foundation, helping lead on our philanthropic activity, also mostly focused on entrepreneurship and small businesses. Uh, I'm Myra Roldan. Uh, I work with AWS Machine Learning University, this Amazon Web Services, and we are focused on working with community colleges and universities uh, who service underserved and underrepresented students to help them gain skills in artificial intelligence. So we're externalizing the training that we use internally with our engineers uh, to extend it over to community colleges and universities. Yes, with your permission, first of all, good morning, everyone. I'm gonna take a little bit longer, maybe about a minute and a half to introduce Harris Cell System. First of all, pleasure and honor to be here this morning. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I was having this conversation earlier with some of the folks at the table, and it is not uncommon, unfortunately, in situations like this, you know, when I introduce Harris Health System, a lot of people in the room feel uncomfortable because they don't know what Harris Health System is, who we are, and what we do, and that's okay. Uh, that's my job today to introduce very briefly what Harris Health System does. Harris Health System is a safety net public hospital system for Harris County. We are also the major teaching site for Baylor College of Medicine and UT McGovern Medical School where the future doctors, nurses, and techs train. But we are also a huge economic engine for this community. As a safety net hospital, we are considered a governmental entity. We actually have our own taxing authority in our level one trauma center. But you know, when I say you know, safety net, everybody thinks about the care that we provide to the indigent, the uninsured, and the underinsured, which is our statutory mandate. But Harris Health System is a lot more than that. Uh, in our level one trauma center, one of only two adult level one trauma centers in Harris County, we provide critical life-saving care to all Harris County. If unfortunately anyone ever is involved in a major trauma or is a victim of a gunshot wound or stab wound, Bentop Hospital level one trauma center is where you want to be. And again, our door is open to the entire community our level three trauma center, LBJ Hospital in the Northeast Corridor of Harris County is the only hospital serving the Northeast Corridor, vast mileage of uh, Harris County. 
And as I said, we are the major teaching sites to our two medical schools, Baylor College of Medicine and UT McGovern Medical School. We are now also in partnership with University of Houston Medical School, the newest medical school in, in uh, Houston and Harris County. You know, based on some studies, more than 50% of all the doctors currently serving all of us in Harris County, City of Houston, did the training at Harris Health System. Really important. And last but not least, uh, in terms of the economic engine, uh, for every dollar tax support that your public health system, Harris Health System receives, Harris Health is able to return about $6 to the economy of Harris County. In a recent economic impact study that was just completed this year, uh, it was shown that Harris Health System is responsible for almost $5 billion economic impact to Harris County and close to $6 billion economic impact to the state of Texas. That's Harris Health System. Thank you for that opportunity. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Elizabeth, tell us about Intel. Yeah, I don't know if you've heard of it. Uh, it's a semiconductor <laughs> company. Um, we focus on technology superpowers. So that would be cloud computing, uh, advanced networking technologies, 5G, 6G, Internet of Things or edge compute, sensing, and the big one, artificial intelligence. And we work on these um, technologies. Actually, our purpose is to create world-changing technology that enriches the lives of every person on Earth. And that's what we're doing here. That's what you're doing here with the adoption of our AI curriculum in this um, community college system. So my role at Intel is I am responsible for integrating digital technologies into state and local government and education nationwide, and I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you all. I want to start by asking how HCC can better equip uh, students with the skills and knowledge needed to succeed in the workforce. You heard some of what we've done so far, but as we embrace Houston's future, uh, what role can employers play in this process as well in helping us get there? Anyone? Yeah, um, <laughs> so I can answer that. Uh, so from the AWS perspective, we find that partnering with institutions, higher education institutions, specifically community colleges, um, we can help you understand what are the skills and the technologies that are um, emerging in the field. So then you can adapt your curriculums and your programs to help students gain the knowledge and skills that will help them succeed in the workforce. Um, and I think that, you know, with the emergence of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and we've seen the boom that it's had in uh, 2023, I think HCC is doing a really great job in partnering with Intel, with Amazon, and with um, other organizations to inform your curriculum so then students can leave programs here at HCC ready to hit the workforce with skills that are relevant and applicable and uh, not just being consumers of technology, but actually being innovators of technologies. And I just stole that from Dr. Barillo because it's one of my favorite uh, mentions that she uses. Um, and I think that it's the partnerships with industry that will help keep your curriculum informed so you can move fast to uh, prepare students for technologies today that are gonna be uh, growing and, ex and actually changing the way we operate in the world in the future. Well, thank you. Um, Dory, uh, in working with small businesses, as you point out, is critical to the economy of our country uh, and they're coming all sizes, so how? How can colleges like HCC better collaborate with those small businesses to ensure that the, uh, the new talent they bring in is, uh, fits the necessary needs, the skills, the knowledge required for their businesses that are very diverse across the spectrum? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, that, it's, a, it's a great question. We, we do a lot of research around small businesses um, and we've seen hiring to be the number one challenge that, that they're facing. It's gotten worse, but it's never been that good. Um, and the two kind of main components of that for small businesses are 
um, the actual recruiting, so finding the talent, finding the applicants, um, but also more specifically finding the applicants with skills. It's very hard for small businesses, unlike an Intel or a Goldman or a AWS, we don't, they don't have the resources to do on the job training for, for a long time. So it's really critical that the, the folks coming out of HTC have those skills before they show up day one. Um, and I think what HTC has an incredible opportunity now with a thousand graduates through our, that, that are small business owners who are employing 17,000 people here in Houston to ask them what are the skills that they're looking for, what are the things we need to lean into. Um, across the nation, it's really sales and marketing are the two pieces that small businesses have a hard time hiring in, in entry-level jobs. Thank you. Uh, Elizabeth, and you're right in the middle of artificial intelligence development, and you've seen things that we haven't seen yet, and you know where, good idea where the technology is going. Uh, how do you think, uh, in, in, in your thoughts on, on the outlook of what AI can do and transformation and disruption, what are your thoughts generally on how community colleges can prepare for the release of the fully functional artificial intelligence models? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things to address there. Um, you've probably heard of chat GPT that come up, and this whole concept of, um, oh, you know, it's going to ruin education in, in some ways, but I think what it really does is highlight the shift in academics, which you've already embraced, but just bringing to the forefront that education isn't about learning facts or formulas. It's about learning how to learn. So this AI kind of just underscores that our mission needs to be not just in case learning, but just in time learning, that I know that as our society progresses and adopts AI and the technology after that, that we know how to go find the answers. Um, I think it also highlights this idea that in academics, and it, as in AI, you focus really well on one question in one domain, but the human element is integrating across all the domains and creating a whole picture. So again, AI, like, gives us this opening to more human potential because we can take this deep intelligence in multiple domains and imply, apply our ethics, our fairness, our emotional element to bring it all to a better solution. So I, I just applaud AI for challenging us on being better educators and better learners. Your other question was really about, like, what does it do for the world? <laughs> um, again, it's unlocking human potential. So we see AI in everything. And it's not that everybody needs to know how to program. So everybody needs to understand the power of data. And when I say everyone, I mean everyone, like all y'all sitting here. Because if we don't um, embrace the technology, if we don't demystify it for ourselves, then we can't be advocates for ourselves. And you don't want the technology to be um, an inhibitor to people going after progress in their small businesses, in their large businesses. You, and you don't want to have a world where only, you know, there's the haves and the have-nots on who can get the economic output of that data. So I think all across the board, People need to be aware and comfortable with AI. I think the program here is just absolutely fabulous that you're introducing it, you know, at a, at a level where it's accessible to everyone. I love that you've um, embraced the four-year degree so you can just um, have a place where you meet people where they're at and they can learn as much as they need to to succeed. Um, I, what, what can I say? It's, it's here to stay, it's a game changer for society, and we all need to be um, aware and comfortable with it. So from, uh, from an industry that's very um, critical on incoming talent and healthcare, uh, we've 
we're looking at a changing model for education where for 200 years we invested in our own education until about the age of 25, uh, and then we went off on our own. Uh, now the, the uh, technology of AI might force that to a shift with uh, smaller components on an upskilling pattern, really on lifelong learning, because things that change can be easily connected to. Um, aside from what that does for higher education funding and, um, and schedules, what do you see the impact on healthcare from the emergence of AI, which some of which you're already looking at right now? Yeah, well, thank you for that. Let me, let me actually address that question, touching on some of the things that have already been said. Um, first and foremost, I, I wanted to say this, you know, as I was listening to your comments this morning, I want to applaud uh, and, and acknowledge uh, the work that HCC has done uh, historically, but also congratulate you on the two degrees, the bachelor's degrees in AI and uh, healthcare management, both of which are going to be definitely in high needs for years to come. You know, you, you asked about the, the partnership between HCC and, and businesses and industries. You know, there's, there's a story that I always share every opportunity that I get, because I think it is, is really the personification of how relationship between HCC and other organizations and industries can uh, be successful. And that's our partnership uh, with, with HCC and actually Capital One Houston, where we have recruited high school graduates from some of our most underserved areas of Harris County in Houston. We put them through an eight week training and to become patient care assistants. We, Harris Health System, have hired majority of the people who have graduated from this program, thanks to HCC. That does a couple of things. As you've heard already about the lifelong learning and on-the-job training, they are actually now earning livable wages working as a PCA, but the option that is now available to them, if they so choose to use it, is that they can go to school and become a licensed vocational nurse or a registered nurse with all expenses paid by Harris Health System. So to get their tuition, I appreciate that. Thank you. But that would not have been possible without this partnership. So again, I want to acknowledge and applaud the, the, the presence of mine and the, the, the future leaning posture of HCC that has allowed us to do this. And we want to expand on that. So now we are actually recruiting high school students you know, we talked about, you know, I think you mentioned the chancellor that, you know, healthcare is not just about doctors and nurses. So we're now recruiting high school students to go into our culinary program to become certificate, certificate professionals uh, in our bistros and in our hospital kitchens. We are providing the same opportunity for environmental services because without them, we cannot run a hospital and a clinic effectively. So all of those things are really important. Getting to your question about the AI, I agree with what Elizabeth said that you know AI, I don't think it's going to replace anything. It is going to just increase our capacity. It's going to be yet another tool that is going to be at our disposal. How we use it, I think it's still going to develop. If you had asked me this question a year ago, I would have given you a completely different answer. Yeah. Six months yeah. from now, I'm gonna give you a completely different answer. Yeah because it, it is really developing that fast, but at the end of the day, I really truly believe that it's not going to replace anyone, but it's going to really enhance our ability to do what we do well. There is one story that I'm gonna share with you very quickly. I think it's the coolest AI story I've heard. Uh, there was a mentor of mine from the business school in Dallas. Uh, a month ago, I was talking to him. I was telling him that he was not feeling well. He was going to get a procedure called an ablation. For those of you who don't, understand what an ablation is, you know, they go into the heart and actually burn a little piece of the heart and electrical component, put things back in order, because what had happened is that apparently a week before that, uh, our conversation, he was sitting at his desk, his, uh, what is it, the Apple Watch, uh, alerted him that he's been sitting for half an hour, he's writing a book, but that his heart rate is 180, he should really check into it. So he called his doctor, goes to the doctor's office, lo and behold, he got atrial fibrillation and kind of a, a dysrhythmia, a rap rapid heart rate. Doesn't normally do anything, uh, not a lot of symptoms, but if it goes untreated, undiagnosed, 
couple of things can happen. It can become dangerous or really gone a couple of weeks or days. You can develop a blood clot in your heart, and then you can have a catastrophic impact. Well, the watch alerted him, went to the doctor, was diagnosed through the ablation to put his heart rhythm back in order. So it actually prevented a potentially catastrophic, life-changing event, again, through AI. It did not replace anything, but it really enhanced the ability of the healthcare professionals to intervene in a much more timely manner. So Dory, how do we help small business? What can HCC do to build on the program that's already hugely successful to make sure that this, um, this current wave of the 2007 uh, iPhone is, is not something that we miss because without the small businesses, the, the foundation becomes very weak. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think for the way we think about it at Goldman Sachs is, is there's obviously a program. You come to HCC and you take 100 hours of a class and you become a 10,000 small business alum. Then there's continuing education, right? So what happens beyond that? And I think um, HCC and all of our other partners were hugely pivotal. For example, when PPP came out, we helped small businesses be the first ones to the bank to get the first tranche of money to make sure that they were the, they were there on and, and the first in line. Um, AI is a good example of that. There is a lot of research happening here with partners um, on campus in an applied way. I think the more that we can share that knowledge, the more we can bring it to our alumni. So they are all, you know, they're the first small businesses to hear about it. Um, and then they share. As I shared before, everyone mentors each other. It is a community of people who work together. The more we can kind of plant the seed, it will grow within the community of how do you take advantage of AI to make your small business more efficient. Goldman's done a lot of research on AI, of course. Um, and most, most of the impact will be supplemental, right? We're not talking about a lot of jobs being, some jobs will be replaced, but it's supplemental. So how do we supplement small businesses and what they are doing to be more efficient and potentially more competitive with big business? Well, thank you very much. I know that we could stay up here all day talking about the opportunities and, uh, and doing some ideating. But I want to thank each of you for contributing and continuing to help uh, HCC and us um, in strategic partnering and really helping the student down where they see it. And I look forward to working with each of you in, in that endeavor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take a quick shot. Thank you all, and I know we're gonna keep this conversation going for uh, the weeks and days ahead. We're going to uh, ch leave Chancellor Maldonado on the stage for some final remarks this morning. Thank you, and uh, thank you for not leaving the room as I was looking up during the Q&A. Uh, you know, the, the gauge is when people start to leave the room, and apparently we're very engaging because you've all stayed. <clears throat> um, so thank you again to Dory, to Dr. Porsa, Elizabeth, and uh, Myra for being here and for sharing your thoughts and helping us be a better college. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with great pride, I've shared uh, many of the magnificent accomplishments of Houston Community College, from our exceptional academics and our dynamic workforce programs, vocational programs, we offer unparalleled opportunities for students for all students, honor students, down to students that have special needs, and we don't leave anybody out. Uh, we truly focus on the equity and the inclusion. Uh, diversity comes to us because of where we are, uh, but we build on that. Uh, at every state of the college that we've had since I've been here, we've showcased students, as we just now did with our Goldman Sachs alumni. Now I want to introduce to you a few other shining examples of students, uh, student accomplished, armed with a Houston Community College education as they move into the workforce and prepared for that 
success that we've promised them. Now, Corey Glover aspires to be in a position to help his community by pursuing a career in public administration. In 2018, graduate of Fort Bend ISD's Elkins High School, Corey is well on his way to achieving that goal. Now, I know Corey is a student serving as a president of HCC Southwest College Student Government and vice president of the United Student Council, which is a group that represents the entire system. Now, he's taken those experiences and put them to good use. He's interning at Fort Bend County Commissioner's Court and at State Representative Ann Johnson's office. Great story of success for Corey. Josue Cananza grew up in rural Peru before relo relocating to its capital of Lima. And upon graduating high school, Jose reached out to Dr. Cheryl Peters at HCC, who's the head of our Honors College, and she helped him through the process of registering, getting into the country and coming to HCC. He's currently pursuing a degree in biology. But the important thing is Josue was recently awarded a fellowship to conduct research on brain cancer therapeutics through a combined program at UCLA and Caltech. that we can find he's the only community college student that has received that honor. Last, but certainly not least, I want you to meet Bernice. Upon her enrollment at HCC, her only goal was to become proficient in English. But that education bug hit her hard, and I'm so proud to announce that she's now living the American dream, attending the University of Houston, will soon graduate with a master's in accounting as a CPA. <laughs> and about this time of the year, we need a lot of CPAs, don't we? So, you know, during my nine-year tenure at HCC, we've made phenomenal progress on student success and fiscal stability and planning for the future. We've built exceptional financial reserves with an excess of $109 million more than required by policy. We've reduced debt by $300 million. And we did this while maintaining, while maintaining a flat tax rate and while waiving $2 million in tuition for senior citizens and waiving $57 million in tuition for dual credit students. That's $60 million that we've invested across our communities. And we did this while maintaining our hard-earned reputation for quality fiscal reporting and achieving a Moody's top ranking of a AAA credit rating and stable financial outlook. That's phenomenal. Now, the key goal of our, our North Star is student success, that ultimate student experience. And working as one college over the last few years, as I previously stated, we've reduced the time to graduation for first time in college students by more than a year. That's 30% decrease. We've increased college level attainment for first year students in reading from 43% to 68%, 15 points, in writing from 48% to 63%, and in math from 27% to 39%, a 12-point increase. That does not happen by accident. It's the result of persistence, planning, and paying attention to the data. Houston's future by adopting a strategic plan that allows us to react to the unexpected, like the pandemic, has helped in that way. We have embraced Houston's future, and so has Houston and our community and business partners embraced us. We've become inter interdependent. We've accomplished all this because of us. The Board of Trustees, the staff, the faculty, the community, the administration, the students, the HCC Foundation, all working as one, all trusting and believing in each other. 
Our actions have been driven by the college's mission, values, and strategic priorities, which are student success, diversity and equity, personalized learning, academic rigor, community investment, and college of choice. And we're addressing all of those things at one time. And money's important, but it's not the only thing, and we've showed that. Our success in all of these areas is a testament to the hard work and dedication of HCC's faculty and staff who have worked tirelessly through disruption and disruption to provide students with the support and resources needed to succeed. Embracing Houston's future is now in our DNA. We don't need to say it because we know we're going to do it. We have transformed into one college system. Together we've achieved common goals and solved complicated problems. We move from isolated problems to efficient transactions and finally to decision processes that focus on improved outcomes and not transactions. We've demonstrated that HCC is more adaptable and responsive to change than ever before. We are rightly positioned to continue with this great success, and I'm proud to report that the state of the college is strong. Thank you for your time today. I hope you take away some energy from this. Please take the, uh, the annual reports that are sitting at your desk, and I hope to bump into you soon and continue this journey of our North Star of student success. Thank you. Once again, thank you all for joining us this morning. If you would like to join us for a walkthrough tour of the West Houston Institute, please meet right outside in the lobby. Thank you and have a great day.